Hey CBC, Pastor Scott here with today's daily Bible reading devotional. If you would like these devotionals delivered to your email inbox, you can sign up for them at findcommunity.com slash Bible reading. And you can also get all the readings that are listed there with links to the readings on Bible Gateway. If you were with us this past weekend, we celebrated Palm Sunday, which is the beginning of Holy Week, the week leading up to Good Friday and Easter. And it's a special time as we have this opportunity on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday to prepare our hearts for Good Friday and for Easter Sunday. On Good Friday, we'll take some time to reflect upon the cross and what it means that Jesus died for our sins. And then at 9.15 on Sunday morning via our live stream, we'll celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. And our readings all this week are gonna be looking at the resurrection, at kind of the crucifixion, and all the themes kind of surrounding Good Friday and Easter. And today's reading comes, like I said, from Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The prophet Isaiah wrote this hundreds of years before Jesus would enter Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, before his last supper with his disciples, before the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, before his arrest, before his trial, before he was beaten and before he was crucified. Hundreds of years before all that happened, Isaiah wrote it down. And the problem with a passage like this is that if you've spent any amount of time in the church, you've probably heard it. If you've been around the church for as long as I have, my entire life I have read this passage time and time again. I have taught out of this passage time and time again. I am 38 years old, so there's a good chance I've heard this passage at least 38 times when it comes to Good Friday and Easter. And familiarity with a passage like this probably doesn't breed contempt, but it might breed a little indifference. And we might rush past it thinking, yes, I know he was pierced for our transgressions. By his wounds, we are healed. We, we get it, we know it, we've read it. But my prayer for you and my prayer for myself, honestly, is that throughout this week, as we go through these passages, some of which might be very familiar, that God might give us new eyes to see that. That God might bring something new from his living, active word to influence us, to shape us, to change how we act. Because it's true, we may have read these passages before, but we have never lived through a time like this. A time of crisis, a time of uncertainty, a time of sheltering at home, a time of fear, a time of anxiety. And so we are at a different place this year than we've ever been before looking at these passages. So I pray for all of us that Holy Week 2020 might be a time where God 
opens our eyes anew, shows us something new about familiar passages, and shows us ways that we can dive more deeply into his word, into the experience of Good Friday, Easter, and the rest of Holy Week. Also that we might not be so familiar with these passages, but we might be encouraged by them. That we might not let familiarity breed indifference, but that instead our, we might have a passion lit anew for God's word and what he wants to show us this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow. Thank you.